thank you for checking out our YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe and like. And please visit us at barrykibrick.com where you'll see all the ways that you can become a patron of our mission and help us continue to build a community of seekers who quest for knowledge, information, and most importantly, wisdom. Today on Between the Lines, how compassion can take you out of the darkness with my guest, the talented Marielle Hemingway. Welcome, I'm Barry Kibrick. Marielle first came into our hearts when she co-starred with Woody Allen in the acclaimed film Manhattan. Now with her memoir, Out Came the Sun, we see how she overcame her family's legacy of mental illness, addiction, and suicide while she sheds light on the dark moments that may pervade all of our lives. I'm a writer today because I was a reader when I was 11 years old. And it was... You, e don't need to, need, you do not need to prove your state of happiness to anybody. Most of these speeches were as much as a month in preparation. The characters, the heroes in this book, are seekers of truth in, in a story that, that involves a lot of corruption. You don't get a chance to really talk about what's real. And that is the first thing to do. Marielle, it is, as you could tell by the excitement in the green room alone, <laughs> everyone is just so excited to have you here. Welcome to the show. It's such a pleasure to be here. I'm so thrilled. Mario, you know what I love about a book like this is that it's obviously such a unique situation. Your grandpa is Ernest Hemingway, you, but you share the problems of your life in a manner that allows every one of us to relate. Well, you know, and that's kind of the point of the whole thing, is that, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a Hemingway, a Smith, a Kennedy, a whomever. We all share in the human experience. I mean, it's all about, we all have families. We're all not perfect. You know, but we, we you know, and you don't even know as when you're in a childhood, you don't even know what you're in. You know, I, I, I realized the first time that I was a Hemingway, I was on the chairlift with them with some unknown people. It was the year that I learned how to ski, which I was very, very young, and I learned how to ski. And I, and I was sitting on the chairlift with somebody. Hi, hi. Oh, what's your name? Marielle. Oh, what's your last name? Hemingway. Oh, <laughs> you know, and their eyes change. And, and this would happen over and over again. Like, Ernest Hemingway? And I go, yeah. And I didn't really know what I was saying. I was like, yeah. And it was such an interesting sort of like, that made me different, but I was so not different. I lived in a small town, living kind of a normal life. Except you went to Ernest Hemingway Elementary we, School. Yeah. So Can that's kind of about that just... being the di most difficult thing. Like fourth grade, you send a paper in, you give it like this. Here, don't judge me harshly, oh. you know, because they expect something and they take it and they give me a knowing look. I was like, hey, you know, I'm I'm eight. <laughs> Uh, but you know, you said something before about all families, and you used this line, a family is a cracked mirror that nevertheless reflects us accurately. Well, it's true, because we, it's not dissimilar to my grandfather's, you know, we, we're, we get we break in the anyway well <laughs> somewhere in there and oh, I, I'm oh, not about get, a farewell you know, to arms am yes, I right a with a, to arms, we, we but are I'm, all I'm broken but we're the piece we break it, grow stronger it, yes exactly but it's also very similar with who we are as families because we are broken we are put together we are we are this beautiful you know sort of symphony of all kinds of different emotions and feelings and families are complicated families are wonderful families are complex families go up and down and all around but it's those it is that reflection back it is more accurate because it's cracked you know because we don't because things aren't perfect things aren't shiny things aren't flat things have complexity you know when I speak with friends, though, and I hear this sentiment, not this line, we felt alone when we were together. Yeah. That to me is, that's a, I don't know, there's a sadness about that that's palpable. 
And there is. And 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 I I felt that I felt that myself, you know, being in the in the in the you know, we, we had this thing in our family called wine time <laughs> where my parents would every day wine time could you know, it shifted in time, but it was it, it was a time where my, my parents would have a glass of wine and then another glass of wine and another glass of wine. And as the wine kind of built up and I would watch and I really was an observer, it was like I, I sat, or it, at least it felt that way, I sat in silence watching my family. My sisters were quite a lot older than me so my, and my parents were, you know, having their issues, but watching them sort of dissolve into a world that I wasn't a part of you know, because I didn't drink, I was a very small girl. So as they, as they would kind of separate from me, it's literally like they, they almost became ghost-like, like visions, like I couldn't even touch them anymore. And, and, and I felt so very much alone. Well, you know what you said? Everyone lived in somebody else's shadow. And that is that invisible place. You could see how your dad had to. He was Ernest Hemingway's son. And, How difficult oh, is that? Yeah, but everyone though seemed in the family, either the old Margot lived in a Muffet's shadow, Muffet, you know, you all seem, and, and there is, you mentioned that you felt like you, you'd almost get the sense when you're reading this that you are the third eye looking at all of this and observing it. You really do. I mean, at least for me, and maybe it's because I was so young, maybe it's because I wasn't inebriated and I didn't know how to drink, <laughs> but there was some level of, 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 you know, it's almost that Buddhist thing. You become the observer and you watch and you take things in and you interpret things and you misinterpret things and you, and you, you know, it's a distance kind of thing and it's a, and it's a loneliness and it's a, and it's also kind of a, a, you create a secular world for yourself. You create a world where you can function. It's almost like being um, in, some, in an institution of some kind where you actually have to create boundaries for yourself to protect yourself. It's almost as though I had to find a way to, 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 to find myself within myself because I, I did feel alone, not that my parents weren't didn't love me. They loved me, you know, and I loved being with them. But I, but I, I felt disconnected from them, and I didn't know why. Well, you know, you use this line, and I think, I think all of us, every single one of us in any family, even the most perfect one, does this at, if not one time in their life, every moment of their life. You say you question your own emotional honesty, and is that not what? we all search for, even if we think we want money, even if we think we want fame, even if we think we want those things, what we really want is just to feel good within ourselves. Absolutely. We want it, we want to feel, we want, want to feel real. I mean, there's a, there's a level of, of emotional honesty being like, do I feel, you also want to be heard and, and seen and, and understood for who you are. I mean, there was a great deal of, of my life where I felt like I was someone inside, but I could never figure out how to be that person I felt like I was on the outside. It was constantly like this struggle to like, it was so, it was almost like clouds. <laughs> like I couldn't figure out like, why do I know that I'm this way? Like I thought I'm intelligent, but I can't seem to make myself understood in a family that couldn't, they couldn't listen. But I think even with good families, that's what I'm talking about. That sense, in fact, you use it as, you know, you, you felt the separation between who you were and the way you were in the world. Yeah. And I can't help but realize that almost everyone I speak with, everyone I exactly. know, that is an interesting trait. You make the observation in a way that I think really clarifies it though. And that's what yeah. I, I think is important because we do feel this sort of duality within ourselves. But that's a human condition. It's just as a child, you don't know that that's absolutely normal. Everybody feels it. That's why I took pen to paper. I, that's why I'm, I, I wanted to, 
to, to, to, to create a situation. It's really not about my life. It's about how we all feel. That sense of like wonder and confusion and, and delight and you know, all the complex emotions that we feel of, of, a, of a confusing life, you know? But, but that's life because we do all feel a little bit like, why is it there is so much duality? Why am I so separate from who I think I am and to who I really am? or to who I'm being and who, who I really am. It seems to hit home, I know, too. In, uh, it sounds funny, but it's, it's one of the most famous roles you're known for. But in Manhattan, <laughs> when, when Woody Allen and, and he calls and wants you for this lead <laughs> role, but you, you're, you're laughing now, but because, by the way, you're laughing because I could take this in a number of different ways, which well, makes could, it funny, but I, all right? But I actually think you're but, taking it in the direction I, 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 I am taking it in. it in that other way, is that <laughs> yes. you sense this First of all, you don't. It's a sexy role, and you are not even at this age familiar with. You have to ask your mom, "What did you just say, and what did it mean?" And and this is just after you saw his film, everything you wanted to know about sex. So <laughs> yes. you're, you're really. But yeah. I mean it in the serious way, where, you know, you. Let's put it this way: you had a sense of morality that seemed to transcend your age. Your parents didn't even seem to have it as deep as you did. That's very unusual. A sense of morality for a young person is very unusual, and you have I don't that. know where that, you know, I can't say where that comes from, but, but that's very, that's a very succinct statement because there was, and, and it, was, it was like a burning thing in me. Oh, like, you can and I don't, see. I, like I could feel that I had to do what I knew was right, at least for me. You know, even as a young child, it just, I couldn't go one step in the wrong direction if it didn't feel right. I mean, I took a lot of wrong directions, but there, when things had a kind of a moral context, I felt this, I, abs there was no other way to go about it but to go straight into what, what you know, what I appear, would have felt to me was right. And I, always, and I would look at my family, these, these people I adored and wonder, how, how do they not know this? That's, that's, what, that's the part that I, when I was reading it, I went, wow, how? That, I think if there's an unusual part of the story, that's one of those unusual parts, that you had right. that sense, and your parents lovingly, by the way, they, they yeah. weren't acting out of not love, they just didn't have that moral compass that you did. They really didn't. They really didn't, and it is no judgment, like, you know, I'm 53 years old, I don't judge them. I loved my parents, they did the best they could. Given the tools they were given, we're all, you know, we all repeat patterns until we don't repeat them, until we understand that we're, we're doing patterns. My parents never had the ability to see, oh my gosh, I do this because. It does take time to realize life, unfortunately. Yeah. It, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you oh met, my God. You know, it, it does take time. And, and then when we do, I love your line, you say you finally, as you aged, you realize that no one really thinks about you as much as you yourself does. And if I, if it's I, the, every time, it's is the that best the best? and it saddest is. realization of your life, because you're true. like, Oh my God. I mean, people have said it to you before. And I remember as a kid, like, uh, you know, nobody's thinking about you as much as you are. And you hear it and you're like, yeah, whatever. But there's some part of you until the realization becomes a reality where you go, oh my God, it is so absolutely true. Because when I get it, you know, as we get older, you just start to go, how I feel about me actually matters. It really doesn't matter about them, and they really don't care. I remembered, I started to learn it on movies. Because you know, movies, people like fawn over you and they rush around to make sure that you feel okay and that you look okay and you're doing all this stuff, and it seems like they really like you. And I realized early on, especially from doing a television series, it's like, oh, they just wanna go home. They want to go home on time. They don't want me to be a bratty actress who causes them to ha not be able to go home for dinner and see their kids. I mean, the reality is nobody really cares about you or your stuff the way you do. But the reality also is this, as you say, when we do that, though, we still can't help but feel somewhat out of step. I believe that all of us, and you, you particularly mentioned this, we feel a little bit out of step. And as you say, 
it's hard to reconcile that great divide between who we really are and how we feel we are. If, if I could do anything, that would be the one thing I'd want people to walk away with, that they're okay. And even if they don't feel that way, they're okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's the, the bet, I, I think one of the best stories, or one of the best stories of my, of, of kind of a, a sort of an epiphany, though I don't learn anything in one fell swoop because I'm, I'm a lifetime learner. So, you know, <laughs> what's interesting is that I spent a lifetime trying to, trying to feel that that inside self to the outside. So my solution, my like incorrect assumption was everybody outside me is gonna have an answer for me. A guru, a doctor, a, you know, a this, that, and the other thing, a director, a, a somebody, a parent, a, a, a husband, a, you know, whatever it was, a person, a place, a thing was gonna give me the answer to all of my anxiety about myself, my, my trying to control. I was reaching, 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 whether it was you know, food issues or whatever I did in my life, trying to find myself, trying to be normal, trying to not get sick like, you know, mentally ill like my sisters or, or have you know, cancer like my mom or you know, just be unhappy. Like what, what I observed as a child, as that observer, I didn't wanna become those things. I love them, but boy, I wanted to keep them at a distance. And all that searching outside. So, at one point, maybe, I, I want to say 10, 12 years ago, I went to India with my ex-husband, and um, we went to see His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. And, and it was extraordinary. You're like thinking, oh my gosh. And we get to have a private audience with him in Dharamsala. And it was a wonderful, it was a wonderful moment. And we go and we had, and all these people that are with us, a private audience means there's 10 people, very, you know, exquisite politicians or people in entertainment, you know, whoop de doos They're whoop de doos in a room. And I love whoop de doos <laughs> right? you know. <laughs> and they've got a list of, of erudite questions. You know, how do we bring peace to Tibet? And you know, they're like, I have nothing. I've got nothing for this holiness. I'm just sitting there kind of amazed that I'm in the room with him. He comes in, he couldn't be more delightful. He just, he lights up a room, he smiles all the time. I smile, I giggle because I giggle when I'm nervous and I'm giggling and I'm looking at him and he'd look at me and he'd giggle periodically. And it's coming towards the end of the meeting and I know that and I'm thinking, thank God, I got out of here scot-free, he didn't ask me anything. And just as we were about to wrap it up, and I'm sitting here, and he's sitting right there, and he's on this, he's on this, you know, uh, uh, armchair. He's in this armchairs, ar armchair, and he, just towards the end, he looks at me, and he looks me in the eye, and he laughs, and he smiles, and he pauses, and he puts his hand on my hand, and he says, "You're okay." Oh God, that's just what we were talking about. And. It was a moment, and it wasn't because he's holy. It wasn't like, oh, he's a, you know, a, a magic person. It was, he, t he, he actually said what I needed to say to myself. And I, I got it. I looked at him and I went, I am. All those years reaching outside myself thinking that somebody had an answer and it was in me. I'm okay. And I realized I was, and it was from those years on, I really kind of gathered information and then went inside. I learned, I really got deeply into a, meditative, a meditation practice, but I got into like really observing on the inside and I realized I'm okay. It feels and sounds like the way you're talking, there's, it's almost a rebirth in, yes. in, a, certain, in a certain way and I don't, I, it could be religious, it could be anyway, but literally a, a reawakening. It Maybe is. that's even better. It was. It was, like, it was like he went, bam, and I went, oh, you're right. It was, it was so, it was, a, it was kind of a, it was a gift. It was a true gift. You know, and, and that's why I, I can't be certain of this, but this line must have come after that experience because you say the beauty of humanity is in this balance, and yes. that couldn't have been there prior to you feeling okay. No, no. 
And that's when I realized that we're all a mess and it's okay. The balance is knowing that you've come from a mess, knowing that there's dis-ease in your home, knowing, and, and, and knowing that there's you know, great things that you will learn from everyone. But until you take them all in and let it process within your machinery, you know, within your brain, within your spirit, within your life experience, and kind of let it come out, that is what balance is. It's understanding. It's not being, it's not being perfect. It's about b doing this. Balance is balance. Balance isn't, it's not, you know, sedentary. It's motion. You know, it's movement. It's knowing that we're, some days are good, some days are a little bit odd and bad, and, but that's good. That's balance. You know, you, you were, earlier you were searching for grandpa's words from Movable Feast, Thank but you. I, found, I found your words. Didn't ah. find his, but I found yours. Oh. And I think they're, well, they're as, I, okay, sorry, Ernest. <laughs> they're, 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 they're sorry, good. Papa, you know what? As you're you not say here in the book, to defend they're, yourself. They're good enough, okay? Okay, good. Over the course of our lives, trapped in our lives, liberated by our lives, we become strong at the broken places. Now, I know Grandpa said it a little differently, yes. but that is what's important for us to yes. take home today. Yeah, absolutely. Because it is, it's like that awakening you were talking about. It's like, I feel like every day is like new and really exciting. Doesn't it in some way when, when that happens, you even feel younger? I know that sounds, it no, sounds no, really no. strange, but I, I, whenever I can make a little more <laughs> awareness, I always know that the awareness is only coming because I'm getting older, yet it, it feels feel like, like I'm becoming a, younger. I don't get that. That's exactly, I mean, you know, we, we joke as, as we get older, we joke about that, you know, I never felt better, but it's true because as you get more knowledge and understanding that you know nothing, you feel there's a, there's a freedom in that. It takes the weight off your shoulders. And so you feel light. And isn't youth a feeling of lightness and energy and vitality and excitement? And that's what's like so incredible because I think, oh right, I'm older. Holy crap, I still feel, I feel light. I feel like a kid. Every day that I learn something new about myself, it couldn't, you couldn't have expressed it better. It's just, it makes you feel younger. Especially as you used in the, in the words when you're dealing with so, when we all deal, I'll take you out of the picture or I'll put you yeah. in the picture. When <laughs> right. we all deal with these things, but your words were this, and it, it was to a particular thing, but I think I could broaden it out, is you, you feel sometimes like you're looking through a gray curtain. That's yes. the words that you used. And I think that's what oftentimes happens to all of us. Instead of just pulling back the drapes and seeing clearly, we're just comfortable staring at that dark curtain. Well, and it's kind of like my family. My family was trained to look through the dark curtain. And so that's what they did. And they never challenged themselves. And I think that's because of addiction. You know, I think that's because of alcohol. And, you know, I think when you do things that, that alter your clarity or your ability to even look for clarity, then you can, then you can only always look through, through a filter you know and then it's when and there's always somebody in a family that decides i'm going to pull the curtain to the side because i need to see clearly well that for the longest part was your role you felt you were the caretaker i loved my mom i wouldn't have done it differently and also caretaking was something i and then i realized i repeated that pattern throughout my ex-husband then had cancer and i became a caretaker again it was a role I was extremely comfortable with. But what's interesting is when you really become the real caretaker, being a mother, yeah. you say these words, and I go back to that other part of, uh, you say it rejuvenated yes. me. So once again, an awakening, a reborn yes. again. And, and now you're really it, the real caretaker. Yeah. And then also using, yeah, using what was a pattern to become something that was like, oh, this fills me. This fills me up. This is a good kind of caretaking. And then when you come from love, like I'm in a really good, a really power, wonderful relationship right now, and, and we caretake each other. That's what balance is, you know? That's, that's not codependence. That's like, I love you, so I want to take care of you. And that's like a child, that's like the child thing. I don't have to, 
but I want to. It's different when you get a choice. It's, you know, freedom is when you have choices. It's, it's when you feel locked is when you think, I, I have to do this. And there were times in my childhood where I, you know, I was like a little bit like, I have to do this. Um, and sometimes I wouldn't think of it any other way and I was happy about it, but then there were some times when it felt kind of uncomfortable. But that was usually after I'd kind of ventured away from, from our life and started to see that maybe that wasn't what you were supposed to do. Marielle, besides being so beautiful, <laughs> you're so wise, and I can talk to you with that forever, but our time is up. It I'm, is enough. It, it is no. up. No. I, I, I have to end, though, with these words, because, again, I think they relate to all of us so much. We all live our stories with a sense of panic and hopefully come out of them at some point with a sense of calm. Thank you, Marielle, for sharing that calm with us today. Oh. What a pleasure. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. And thank you guys for joining us. Now, before Maria leaves, I'd like to leave you with these few more words from Out Came the Sun. As I live in the present, make peace with the past, and think about the future, I'm trying to keep this in mind, that we're all here on the same planet, that we're all lifting weights and setting down burdens, and that we're all putting our feet where our feet need to go. I'm Barry Kibrick. Between our past and our future, please put down your burdens and let your feet go where they need to go. Thank you so much, Mariel. Wow. How cool is that?